So an easy way to shoot flowers in the round is to use multiple exposure. So I have it in camera and I'm going to turn that on. I'm going to use the average setting because that's gonna give us a nice blend. Once that is set up, most cameras, the multiple exposure works the same way. I'm going to go ahead and take my first shot. Once it's complete, I'm going to turn my flowers just a little, give them time to rest, and then take my second shot. You'll be able to see on the back of your camera how your image is beginning to look. At this point, I'll continue to take shots and turn my flowers. I like to do anywhere from 3 to 6 to 12 images. The great thing about in-camera multiple exposure is you'll be able to see your image as you're processing it. It is a beautiful, fun, easy way to create abstract flowers in the round. Now next up, we will look at the more traditional way of just taking standard shots and then combining them in editing. So here we are with just my camera and the flowers on a stand. What you wanna do is shoot your first image, then turn the flowers in one direction, stop, come take your shot, and then get up and turn your flowers again. So you want to turn with each shot. Next up, we are gonna review how to combine these beautiful images in editing. So I'm here in Lightroom Classic. I've brought all of my images that I took from this photo shoot where I shot these red amaryllis. I also shot some white flowers that you'll see in another video. And I tried a couple techniques. So first, um, I did a multiple exposure. So in my camera, you can set up to do your multiple exposure. And so as I shoot the images, it actually um, saves a copy of those images for me, which is great because then I can use them and take them into Photoshop. But I wanted to show you with, I think, six shots. So I was turning the flowers around as I shot. This was the final outcome. Now with six shots, I purposefully went full circle with the flowers. And so I got this really um, beautiful, almost like a full bouquet. Um, it's a little weird in the front, and I think it might have been um, maybe one of the last shots, but um, I think it's pretty fun. And this is without any editing. So what I thought we'd do is go ahead and take these seven images and blend them in Photoshop. Now, I also did, I did a second one with just four images, and it's not, um, I like the front better, but it doesn't have as much detail as the other one. And then I did a set of 17 images. So I moved the, um, moved the flower slower and took more shots. But for the purposes of you um, viewers learning how to do this, I am just going to take these six images and edit these using Photoshop. And we'll see how it turn out, turns out. All right, so let's select 51 through 56. And now I'm gonna right click and you want to do edit in. Now you wanna come down to the bottom. You can open as smart object layers in Photoshop if you want to save all your history and if you like working with smart objects. I'm just gonna open as layers. Um, I'm not a huge smart object user sometimes, but if you are, then feel free to do that. So what we're gonna do now is open these. Now, you may be wondering, Lori, I, if you watch my videos, I thought you switched over to Lightroom. Well, 99% of the time I am, but Photoshop, Lightroom Classic has the way that you can bring these layers in and it's just much faster. So when I imported these images, I did save them to my external hard drive. I can view them all in Lightroom, but I am using Lightroom Classic today. All right, so these images are gonna load. 
Now, normally, if you are doing like a focus stack, you may be familiar with focus stacking. You would want to align your images so that they're all lined up in case something moved. But we're not doing a focus stack. We've actually turned our images. So I don't think it's necessary to align. So you don't need to do that if you're familiar with that step. Actually, what we're going to do is we are going to start with we've got our first image. Now we're going to go turn on our second image. And what we're going to do is we are editing each individual image separately and we are going to bring out the details that we want. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this first one or second, excuse me, second image. And I'm going to lower the opacity to about 50 percent. Now you can play with it. Um, you can even go lower, but I think 50% is probably going to work pretty nice. Now, initially, it may look a little a little weird. Um, you can turn off and see where your original was and come back. So I don't like how that is sticking out. Now, what you can do now, um, we can do a mask, but I also want to try a different blend mode. So that's multiply. Sometimes soft light works nice. You can see how that's working. Um, hard light's usually too dark. Multiply's sometimes an option, but I'm going to stick with normal. And now I'm going to add a mask. Now I like to mask as I go. I'm going to flip it to black because our mask is white. And I'm going to take my brush opacity down, maybe 60-70% just for some softness. And what I want to do is bring out some of that original um, flower, just a little bit. Then I'm going to flip it and I'm going to take the opacity all the way up. And I want to just make sure that we still have the layer that we brought in. Now, the only thing with starting with this original layer is it does have this um, stem to it. So I'm going to see how this works. We may we may have to switch this out and not use that image, but we're going to give it a shot and see what happens. OK, so now I'm going to go to the next layer. Now, this one probably will cover up that front, which might be just what we need. So we are going to go ahead and layer um, lower the opacity. And probably for this one, I'm probably going to stick a little higher than I normally would because I want that flower in the center. Now let's try again to do the multiply and I just don't think that's necessary. I'm going to keep it on normal and I'm going to come down and go ahead and apply my mask, flip it to black. Um, let's go ahead and keep it at 100%. I am going to bring back some of those details. Yeah, so I'm just going to come around and kind of play with it. Um, you can always flip it back to white, bring back the other details. Um, let's flip it to black. I don't remember what was in the center there, but I like that new flower. Whoops. Let's flip it black to white. And I'm going to just keep all of that new flower that we added. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, so it is coming together. So now I'm going to go ahead and we're going to add this version, which is going to give us some of the side view. And we're going to go ahead and lower our blend mode. Now, when I do um, shooting in the round with other images besides flowers, sometimes I start and I lower the blend mode pretty far. But for these where I just have a few images, um, I'm just going to play with that blend mode and I may actually keep it a little higher. So if you watch any of my other videos when I do trees, um, you'll see that I reduce the blend mode as I go, but I usually have a lot more images. Again, you can try a different um, uh, blend mode here versus your opacity, your soft light, hard light. I think I'm still really happy with, um, actually hard light's kind of nice. It's giving us some definition. All right, so I'm going to add my mask, flip it to black, and I want to lower the opacity a little bit. And I'm just going to see, I want to continue to bring out, now I do like how I'm getting that shadowing out here. So I want to keep all of that. 
as it goes around. And let me flip it to black here. There's spots that I want to keep, but I also want to get that really full fun look. All right, I'm going to go to the next one, which is this beautiful little side view. Take the opacity down. And let's take this one pretty far down. And I'm just not sure I even need that image. So when you get to this point, you can turn it off and on and see what you think. I'm just not seeing a big enough difference. So I'm going to leave that one off. And then I'm going to go to this last one, which is the same, same direction. So we may not need that one either. Let's try a different blend mode with it. Um, darken, multiply. That's kind of neat. So let's turn it on and off and see. And let's try some different opacities there. And let's turn it on and off. Yeah, I like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply a mask and just want to really um, emphasize the center part. And we've already got those um, emphasized. And so I think that's pretty nice. The only thing that I don't like is this center image right here. I am going to duplicate and I'm going to move it to the top of the stack. So this was that center image. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to invert this mask and um, what I want to do is on white, I'm going to bring out that center because, as I mentioned, I didn't really like um, that first image that we used. So sometimes something like that may happen. Now I'm going to lower this blend mode just so it still looks very dramatic, but I'm going to keep kind of bringing out bringing out that center. So I like that so much more. This is without it. And this is with it. And I'm actually going to increase, increase that blend mode. So, you know, you learn lessons as you do these. And that first image just had that big um, bloom, that bud, and it just didn't work really well. So at this point, what I will do is I'm going to do a stamped layer. So command option shift and the letter E, that's going to give us a clean layer. I do that because in case I want to go back, I could always delete this layer. I don't want to flatten it yet. I just want to have a clean space to work from. Now what I'm going to do while I'm in Photoshop is I'm going to go ahead and use the remove tool and just clean up some things that were on the um, backdrop that I was using. And at this point, we could also make any other edits that we want to make using Photoshop, or you could take it right back to 